Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to start looking at inflation and how we measure it. Um, and the goal for today is to be able to identify what a price index is and be able to describe how it's calculated, explain the function of the consumer price index, explain the idea of inflation and what that means for us, and be able to calculate a rate of inflation. And then in class we'll also work on identifying the winners and losers of inflation. All this information is in your textbooks. Chapter 23, pages 603 to 607. When we talk about prices um, and what are prices doing, uh, it's very difficult to, to be able to have a single answer to that question without some sort of measure of inflation because some prices go up and some prices go down. You know, the, the price for LCD TVs, the trend is down considerably from 2005, from nearly 1500 bucks now to less than 400 for a comparable TV. At the same time, the price of gasoline has gone up uh, significantly since the... Uh, the mid 2000s so that now we're looking at gas prices in the range of 350 a gallon today versus you know less than two dollars six or seven years ago so what are prices doing well the answer is it sort of depends on what market you're talking about but we can have sort of a measure of general tendency and that's what we mean by measuring inflation so how do we measure inflation we measure it by using a price index some it's a it's a measure that helps us to uh, aggregate all of the different prices so it helps us to incorporate the idea that some prices go up and some go down but on the average this is where prices are going and so our price index is what we use in order to create a price index we use what are known as consumption bundles or market baskets and we take the the value of the market basket which we'll talk about in just a second and we take the value of the market basket in a base year and we compare it to the value of the same market basket in our given year and multiply by a hundred and that gives us an index number and then we can um, use different index numbers from different years to calculate um, the change in price either inflation which is the rise in prices or deflation which is the decrease in overall prices when it comes to the market basket, what we're talking about is a, a quote basket of goods that are typically purchased by people. And really, it, that market basket could be anything we can we want. It can be any set of goods that we think are important or relevant to a group of people. Um, the trick here is not so much what's in the basket, but that we use a base year to set the amount of goods that are in the basket, and we use that same set of goods every single year to measure the changes in price. So if I want to set a market basket that is uh, measuring inflation for athletics. I could have a market basket that looks at the price of footballs, basketballs, baseballs, and um, softballs. And, and my market basket may have two footballs and one basketball and three baseballs and four softballs because that's what the typical person would purchase. And when I have that market basket set, I'll use that number of goods every single year and just track how much each of those different pieces of equipment cost and um, and total up the the cost of the basket and then compare that basket from year to year to year and if the price of the basket goes up then we have inflation if the price of the basket goes down we have what's called deflation for the most part we're going to focus on inflation that's generally the the government's state of policy is to ensure a certain degree of inflation from year to year and so that's going to be the emphasis that we're going to place um, at least for today so what is inflation? Inflation, as I said, is the increase in the price of goods over time or the increase in the market basket over time. We watch the uh, index number rise and um, that would be inflation. So how do I calculate inflation? I, I take the index number from the current year and subtract it from the, the previous year and divide by the previous year. It's just a straight percent change calculation. So new minus old divided by old. And that tells us how how much of a by percentage how much of an increase has there been in the overall price level again keeping in mind that some prices have gone up and some have, some have gone down but overall we could say that prices are moving in this direction and by how much um, inflation is important because it helps measure an impact on our real wages and real income so nominal wages is just how much money I get every year but real wages talks about and looks at my uh, purchasing power and it allows us when we look at real wages to compare how much I can buy now versus how much I could have bought two or three years ago. As a general rule we can say that with inflation comes a decrease all things being equal a decrease in real income and real wages so if my nominal wages are the same and prices are rising then I have less purchasing power than I did before and I've experienced a decrease in my 
real wages. And and again, just like um, with the previous video, when um, when we looked at GDP, there's a huge important difference between real and nominal. And so with this, we really care about real wages and real income to see um, how we're doing. Inflation also has an effect on what we call the real interest rate or the, the interest rate, effective interest rate, interest rate people have to pay on loans um, that they take out. And this sort of gets at the idea of winners and losers when it comes to interest. So how this works is when loans are given out, they're given out with a nominal interest rate. So if I borrow money, I, I have an interest rate of 5% interest. So uh, every year I have to pay 5% of the balance um, to the bank along with the principal, the amount that I actually borrowed. But with inflation, it reduces the actual interest rate, the real quote, real interest rate that I'm, I'm having to pay. Um, because my dollars are worth less and they're fixed at the amount that I owe, then I'm, I'm paying back the, uh, the amount that I borrowed um, with dollars that don't, that don't buy as much. So it's really sort of helpful to the person who's borrowing to see this inflation rising uh, because it essentially lowers the interest rate that they have to pay. And so there's a simple uh, equation for that. We take the nominal interest rate, we subtract the inflation rate to tell us what the real interest rate is that we have to pay. So if I had a 5% nominal interest rate and there was 3% inflation, then basically I'm only paying 2% um, interest on the loan that I have taken out. Essentially the opposite then would be true for people who, who save. You know, if you're saving money and you, you're getting um, a 2% interest rate or a 1% interest rate uh, on your money, but there's a 2% inflation, then I take my nominal 1% minus my inflation rate 2%, and I see that really I'm losing 1% in real value when I'm saving money. So when we're, when we're looking at winners and losers uh, when it comes to inflation, we can, we can do some generalizations. And one is that savers lose and borrowers win. So when there's inflation, people who are borrowing money tend to have to pay back less in real terms than they would have if there had not been inflation. At the same time, the banks that lent them the money are losing um, in the sense that the money they're getting paid back is worth relatively less than it would have been if there had not been inflation. To the extent that your wages are increasing by at least as much as the inflation rate, then um, you would be considered a winner because you would have more real wages, real purchasing power than you had before. Um, and the flip side would be that if your wages are not rising or not rising as quickly as inflation, then you would uh, be considered a loser in this situation. Um, people who are on fixed incomes, for example, elderly people are generally losers when it comes to inflation because their income's not increasing but the costs that they face are and so um, those are some of your winners and your losers when it comes to inflation and if you wanted to flip it you could if there was deflation then the winners become losers and losers become winners um, and you could do the same analysis we're going to do some more practice in class and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you then